Well, welcome to another edition of Bolton In. All thanks to the team at Palmer Bet and all thanks to these two legends all the way from Las Vegas, Adam McGrath. Good afternoon or good evening to you, buddy. How are you? Going well, thanks, Matty. How are you? Mate, sensational. What's the weather like in Vegas at the moment, Dads? Just starting to warm up, getting closer to golf weather, Matty, which is not a good thing for the way that I play. But um, certainly some look forward to it. Uh, it'll be too hot before I know it. But uh, right now, about perfect. Beautiful, mate. We go all the way to Copenhagen where it's a very good morning to Shane Anderson. And Shane, dare I ask, what's the weather like over there, mate? <laughs> yeah, thanks for going down that path, Matty. I appreciate <laughs> it. I've been talking to a lot of uh, family back home in Australia this week and they're telling me how it's sort of, you know, 35, up to 40, sunshine, glorious. Currently right now it's sitting on three degrees with a feel of, feels like a minus two. So uh, we're, we're edging towards... <laughs> Spring, they keep telling me, but we're not quite there yet. It's fresh. Let's uh, leave it at that. Well, I'll tell you what, it hasn't stopped you uh, firing up a storm in the punting stakes, of course, uh, all over Cylinder last week. Both of you boys, to be honest, uh, all over it at a, at a nice price, 11 to 1. And what about the storylines? Jamie Carr, of course, she had the fall 12 months earlier. She couldn't take the ride. She got It's just a great storyline, isn't it? And I... Full credit and full kudos to Jamie Carr. She's been through the ringer, um, you know. Like, and she'll admit it to her own uh, uh, her own demise, I suppose. Uh, you know, she's put herself in those situations, but to bounce back the way she has, I reckon, is absolutely brilliant. And uh, and I love it, Shano. Yeah, champion rider. Um, she's simply when she's at the peak of her powers. Um, if she's not the best jockey in the country, she's certainly in the top three. She's got balance. She's got poise. She's got strength. She's got tactical nous. Um, she gets horses to settle in ways that not many other jockeys do. Um, she can have a horse deep and relaxed and travelling well. She can also have a horse back in the field and up on pace. Like she's very, very impressive. And seeing the evolution and the story of Jamie Carr over the last five, six, seven years has been remarkable. And as you say, I mean, there's been some, some challenges along the way, but when she's in the zone and right now she looks to be the form jockey, not only did she win the new market last weekend, I think she had a treble on the day at Flemington. She's come out, she's been beaten a short half head in the Adelaide Cup when uh, things didn't kind of pan out ideally for her. Like she's just riding so well and um, yeah, all credit to her. And it was a great story. Um, uh, the way the race unfolded last weekend in the new market, um, it was a pretty magical scenario, um, how everything came together on the day. Ads, I'm going to ask you, mate, uh, Imperatories, I don't think loses any admirers. Uh, you know, Gallant, we spoke last week about only two horses carrying that weight to win. Uh, you know, like, I don't think was in the best part of the track. Um, you know, just absolute star of a horse. Well, I mentioned I'd be worried if I lost and I'd hear Shane's voice in my ears. At least he was cylinder and that was my value and it changed best. I didn't feel as bad, but I could still hear his voice as it did cross the line. But I think, to be honest, it was just weight in the end. And I think that was the difference. We talked about it going into it. There was only two horses that had won since 1906, uh, mares carrying 58 plus. And I think that was the difference. Uh, I thought she ran really well. She ran into a horse carrying 51 and a half kilos, who's so very good on its day as well. Um, if you heard James Cummings post-race, he talked about their plans and how well they rank it and where it could go in the breeding grounds as well, um, being a, a potential stallion. So, look, I, I think it was still a very good run. Lost no admirers. Um, was happy to have a little bit on cylinder as well. And I think the, the Jamie Carr story, as we said, really good. Uh, three Group ones in three weeks in a row now. Had that adversity and, yeah, we couldn't have asked for much more. Winning the race that she fell in last year and then winning the race uh, that obviously Dean Holland won last year as well. And her that picture with the kids I thought was just one of the better mm -hmm. racing moments. We, we sort of talked about that at the start of the year, how it would be hard to beat Harry Coffey, but that picture will be something I think a lot of people remember for a long time and will be hung up in a lot of uh, important rooms around the track. Hey, uh, another group one in Sydney, or uh, well, another couple of group ones, and uh, more favourites go down, boys. It's becoming a uh, a bit of a favourites uh, nightmare up there, isn't it? Lady Laguna, of course, Annabelle Neesham, uh, wonderful win, great story. Uh, and then Celestial Legend, of course, uh, winning uh, against Militarise in the Ramwood Guineas. Uh, I'll start with you, Ads. Um, it's uh, It's been tricky up in Sydney for us, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been tricky. Look, the, the thing about it, one didn't blow my mind like when it happened I went I could I could see that happening the militarized one for mine uh was the one that I was sort of like Celestial Legends not a better horse like I, I that one sort of didn't sit as well but 
yeah, as you said, it's been tough to find those winners early days. Um, it's interesting seeing that Lady Laguna form this week, and I'll be interested to see if Shane's tying into that like I am as well. But, yeah, I mean, good wins, still question marks on. Yeah, I mean, I'm still shot by militarised. We know that Shane, they're basically the, your two horses from last carnival, uh, these two. Think about it and militarised. So I'm curious what you thought about both performances. Yeah, Adam, um, look, I'll start with militarised. Uh he ran well. Uh, I think he underperformed um, ability-wise, um, but I also think the winner is a rapidly improving horse, Celestial Legend. Um, so I was uh, shocked by the result, but I can see that the winner is only going to continue to develop. And kudos to Les Bridge, 85 years of age, training another Group 1. For people of you know, my vintage, I'm nudging 50 now. Um, I remember growing up as a kid and um, a lot of my formative years were up in Sydney. And Les Bridge was an icon trainer back in those days, back in the 80s, when he had the likes of Sir Dapper, through to Ken's Eye, so many great horses. I loved him as a trainer then. And it's amazing to think 40-odd years later, he's uh, he's still going strong winning Group 1s because he's in rare territory as an octogenarian group one winning trainer. Um, amazing performance. Militarised, though, I was I was flat after that race. I actually thought he was going to blow that field away. He didn't. Um, but I think there's still more to come from him this campaign, so I'm expecting to, to um, continue on. I will say the Canterbury Stakes, I'm a bit with Joe Pride. The, the tactics in that race just blew my mind a little bit in a negative way. Um, Lady Laguna, deserved winner. She won quite convincingly. Think about it. I think if you'd run that race again, I think you could turn the tables. Um, and, of course, uh, Espiona, the, the mayor, she was, you know, conceding what was an impossible start and she ran on quite strongly. But, yeah, to, to the point that you raised, Matty, um, some upset results, marginal upset results from, from that weekend with the favourites. But, yeah, I, I think if you run those races again, we might, we might get a different outcome. Um, but, Two group ones are going the ways of two very good horses. Yeah. All credit to them. Absolutely, and well-deserved too. Uh, not easy to win. You need a lot to go your way, that is for sure. And uh, and uh, sometimes that's just the way that uh, the penny falls, so to speak. Right, let's have a look at the two features this weekend because uh, we need the tipping shoes on now. And uh, don't worry, we've been in pretty good nick. And Ads, can I just say, you're, uh, you're roughy from the West last week. Um, very, very stiff yeah. there too, mate, at a big price. Weren't we ever? 14s out to 20s and pipped on the line. Not what we want. No, no. And not when you uh, you manage both jockeys, mate. It's... Yeah, less than ideal. Yeah, I've got to <laughs> pretend like I'm happy for one of them. <laughs> hey, let's have a look at the All-Star Mile. And, boys, I just want to get your thoughts on the All-Star Mile. Uh, you've been around uh, the traps, both of you guys, for a very, very long time. Tell us about the All-Star Mile in your eyes this year. I'll start with you, Shane. Give it, Give it to us, mate. Yeah, it's a failing concept, um, and I'll be surprised if it has legs in years to come. Um, uh, yeah, it's disappointing. Uh, we're not getting the field that a race of its value um, should be getting. Now, all credit to connections to Mr Brightside, as the defending champion. He's already racked up over $12 million in prize money. Pride of Jenny, the wonderful mayor of the spring, she's heading that direction. But if you look at the others in the race... Uh, I would say it's overall a disappointing field for a race worth uh, $4 million. Um, I think Racing Victoria, they've made some changes going into this year's renewal. They took out the popular vote angle. Um, it hasn't captured the imagination of the public. And I think, look, at some stage, you've got to turn around and say, we tried something. Has it worked out the way we wanted? My argument is it hasn't for that level of money, that level of investment, particularly when prize money is, is becoming a bigger talking issue, maybe that money can be reinvested in, in other areas. But, um, yeah, it, to me, it's 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 not a strong field. Um, I just think it's been a disappointing outcome for, for all involved with the race and the concept over the journey. It just hasn't captured the imagination the way that they were hoping. Mm, kind of did early days, I reckon, didn't it? But it, you're right. I don't know, like wait for age maybe, like just to, to look to – you know, entice some of these younger horses maybe to, to have a crack and a throw at the stumps, um, you know, coming up against a good horse and having to give weight and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. Can I, can I just I, – I don't want to jump in over the top, Adam, just, but I will say one thing. Look, when I was at Racing.com, I was involved in a lot of the discussions. Racing Victoria pulled together a lot of people across the industry to come up with a concept that they thought could revolutionise the, the game. It was a room, it was about 40 or 50 of us together at one stage, like it was just ridiculous numbers, but everyone's throwing ideas. But the whole idea of trying to take what they do in Japan, and that is having a popular vote race, 
bring that to Australia. They do it with uh, the Uri McKinnon and um, the Takarutsina McKinnon, I think it's called. Uh, there's two big races they do attached to a popular vote. They thought it'll work in Australia. Instead of establishing or using one of the established races on the calendar, like, say, an Australian Cup and reconfiguring yeah. that or whatever, the, they decided to go down the path of starting a new race, launching something new and choosing it at the mile. The problem is all of the big stables that should have been the champions of the concept never got involved from, from day one. It's always kind of been, oh, no one says, I'm definitely setting my horse for an all-star mile. Yeah. And when you've got, you know, so many options on the calendar, it's problematic. So I, I feel the, the idea and the, the wanting to do something different, all credit to them, but it just hasn't built the momentum the way it should. We had a great winner in Mystic Journey year one with a tremendous story, but it just hasn't kept going, you know. Um, even, you know, Chris Waller has been, I think, a bit outspoken and has certainly given some feedback to Racing Victoria about what to do. So uh, I, if you're not getting the big horses, the big stables targeting it, it's only just going to keep treading water and eventually... It, it most likely will, will probably drown. I think they'll they'll reshape the concept in uh, in the next few years. Anything you want to add, Ads? No, I think Shane summarised that really well. I think it started off nicely that first year, but since then it's just been a pretty steep decline as well. Um, this is a big drop off. I thought when looking at it. Um, yeah, not a great field, not a great depth. I just think the hype's not the same. I mean, you think about it when you think of the Everest and these type of races, and then we're talking about the All Star Mile. It's just there's just not the same hype. There's not the same care factor. So I think like Shane said, they either need to completely redo it or probably be done with it and just focus on the, the good group ones going around. We've got some great horses at the moment, some very competitive races. Um, that's probably worth focusing on that compared to trying to get something that's just not taken off. Mm. Yeah, good stuff. Well, let's have a look at the field. All thanks to Palmer Bet. Uh, it is race eight at Caulfield. Over the 1,600 metres this Saturday, 4.15 start, Mr. Brightside is the overwhelming favourite, thanks to Palmerbet at $1.70. Pride Jenny at $3.80. Cascadian at $12. Ayrton, $18. Attractable at $21. Desert Lightning at $26. Buffalo River, $34. And Pinstripe at $34. So outside the top two, boys, it is a very, very open affair. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, Adam McGrath. Are you with Mr. Brightside to go back to back? I had emotional battles like I did last week with Shane's head, and then this time it's just with the horse that I know if I tip it, it's going to run second. If I don't tip it, it's going to win. So it was it was just getting very tough. I'm going to take him on. Um, look, with these two horses, I just don't think there's much between Pride of Jenny and Mr. Brightside. I think if Mr. Brightside draws a gate and gets to run a suit, I think it's the better horse on the day. I think it would win more times they went head-to-head. -head. But the way when I looked at it, you just know where Pride of Jenny is going to be in this race. I know they've talked about that they've been training her sitting off someone and running through the line and stuff. But drawn 11, Mr. Brightside likes to be forward. I can see him being three wide the trip. And so then the question mark is, well, you were beaten by Pride of Jenny last campaign. She's going to get that nice run. I thought her first up run was probably her best first up run we've ever seen in her career. She's never won first up before. She historically takes a little bit of time to build into a campaign. So putting that all together... I just thought it was a safer option, and that's probably the best word for me to use here. It was a safe option to go with her, thinking less can go wrong. The map works out better. All of the ifs but maybes, I thought, pointed her way compared to his, where he's going to need a lot of luck early. If he gets it, then he's the horse to beat. But you are hoping that from 11, knowing how he goes forward, knowing his tactics, knowing he's the best miler in the country and all of that, every other jockey out there knows that as well. So I think they're going to make it very hard for him early in the race. And that was the only reason why when I saw... The price difference, I've elected to go with Pride of Jenny. Righto. Shano, any value there, Ads? Are you going to go any anyone out wide as well? Yeah, I'll, I'll stay with my old boy, Cascadian. I thought the run the other day was still good enough. Um, it was between uh, him and Ayrton with the only two that I could certainly have thought Ayrton's run the other day when held up for a large part with Jamie Carr in the saddle. It was a really good run. I've just gone back to him. I mean, he was second in this race last year. His third up form is really good. Last year, he won the Australian Cup, and he's third up now in this preparation. I think coming back to Victoria will suit him as well. And there should be good speed, speed on with the Pride of Jenny's Matt in the race. So he'll get his chance to get back, settle, and then really attack the line. And he could be tracking a Mr. Brightside into the race. So I think it maps pretty well for him. Beautiful. Shane, are you with the champ? Yeah, I am. Um, I think it's a funny race. Uh, I like the fact that the rail's at six metres for Caulfield on Saturday because that's the, the position they run the Caulfield Cup meeting on. Historically, it tends to be, I think, the fairest of the track movements that you have at, at Caulfield. Uh, by that, I mean it gives those up on speed and those coming from behind fairly equal yep. chances based on, on how tempo will unfold. And I think this will be run really strongly. Think about Mr. Brightside. I've 
like Adam, uh, I haven't had the best record tipping Mr. Brightside. Um, and I looked at this race deeply trying to think, can I find ways of getting him beat again, you know, other than just tipping him? But when you when you look at everything about him, I think actually drawing out barrier number 11 probably gives him a, a better price than if he drew in. Um, he has won from wide barriers in the past. He won a Doncaster, I think it was barrier 18 um, from memory when he won that. He won a Memsey from barrier 14. Look, he's an amazing record at the track, five wins from six starts, amazing record at the distance, 10 wins, three placings from 16 starts. Funnily enough, this is his first go at a mile at Caulfield, so I think the ingredients probably suggest that it's going to suit him ideally. I just think, look, he's the one to beat. Dollar seventy thereabouts, I think, to the right price based on the, the rich vein of form that he's in. And in a race that should be run strongly, I think he's he's worthy of being my best bet in the race, as in, you know, the one I'm most convinced will win. The value bet, Adam mentioned Ayrton. I'm with him as the value bet. I think $18, Matty, is a huge price for an each-way bet on him. Look, he was desperately unlucky in that race at Flemington last start. The blamey stakes down on the inside. He got no clear passage and kind of went across the line fairly untested. He was good behind Mr. Brightside the start before. Uh, he won the Barton back up from a little let-up. And, you know, with like, uh, pride of Jenny sort of drawn immediately on his outside, I think that'll give Jamie Carr options just for him to just be dragged across as she goes forward. And, yeah, I think he's a great each-way bet at $18. I was almost tempted to, to make him my, my sort of bet in the race. I like him at that price. But I'll stick with Mr. Brightside, the one to beat, but the value is Ayrton. I'm with uh, Adam Boyce. Uh, I'm with Pride of Jenny. Uh, I, I just reckon this horse. I think everyone thought it was a fluke, that that win, uh, the first win uh, over the carnival last year and then back it up uh, on Champions Day. Uh, and then I thought the first up run was enormous. I reckon this horse improved um, and I just – yeah, I, I, exactly what you said, Ads. I just reckon uh, going to get a better run. You know where the horse is going to be. You're not going to worry about uh, being caught or trapped out wide or anything like that. So, yeah, prior to Jenny for me, I reckon uh, I just, I reckon a really good play, to be honest. Um, pinstripes, a value for me uh, at a nice price. I like this horse. Um, they went the Cox Plate path. I reckon this horse will obviously go to an Australian Cup, but I just reckon at a big price might be one over the odds. They scratched on the weekend. Um, and... Uh, I'll have a little each way played about 34, 40 bucks. I reckon each way there as well. Uh, that is the All Star Mile. Let's turn our attention now to Ramwick, the Coolmore Classic. Race eight over the 1500 metres. And the Palmer Bet Market, Zoo Gotcha at $3.60. Tropical Squall, $6.50. Samana at $8.50. Jenny Lala at $10. Yonce at $12. Revolutionary, uh, Revolutionary Miss at $13. Vienna Princess, $15. And Kimochi at $16. I'll come to you, Shane Anderson. Really interesting race, this one for mine. It's a big field. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I love this race. Really, really like this race a lot. Um, it's always one of my favourite races of the, the Sydney Autumn Carnival um, because, you know, mares handicap, you often get mares in good form, high-class mares at the top of the weights and you get those little sneaky ones down at the bottom of the weights so you've got to try and see if they're up to it. Look, my best for this one is uh, my selection is all based around the draw uh, and I think the way that the barriers have unfolded for Zugotcha makes her clearly the one to beat. Uh, class mare, I mean... Course and distance, she won the Farlap Stakes 12 months ago at this meeting. Her first up win over Lady Laguna uh, in the Millie Fox was outstanding. She gave, she had 58 in the back, Lady Laguna 55, and she was too strong for her. Lady Laguna comes out and wins the Group 1 Canterbury Stakes last weekend, so the form's been well and truly franked. And she just gets every conceivable hope in the run, I think, for James McDonald from, from barrier number two. She'll be just be stalking in behind the speed. The brakes come away in the top of the straight. I think she'll be too good for them. So I'm pretty keen Zukotcha is the one to beat. Uh, $3.60, I'm happy with that price. It's around what I thought she'd be um, once the barriers uh, uh, came out. So she's my best. My value bet is Jenny Lala, number 16, um, around $10. Good good a price for this uh, emerging mare. I thought she was pretty impressive winning first up at Flemington back on uh, February 7, over 1,400 metres. She had a soft trial at Ramwick with Craig Newitt in the saddle back on March 7. And look, again, I think she's going to stalk the pace. She's drawn really well to be just directly behind the pace with only 51 kilos on her back. I think she's very, very dangerous. And Craig Newitt is very good in these types of races. So I think she's great value, Jenny Lala. Uh, the best who got you, the value, Jenny Lala. But I'm really looking forward to the Gilmore Classic. Ads, what are your thoughts, buddy? 
Yeah, I'm with Zoo Gotcha as well, and not normally a horse of mine. I don't think I've ever thrown it out in any of the shows we've done, to be honest. And I went back and looked at it, so I tried to get it beat as I was looking at the, the form, and I just thought it was a clear standout, to be honest. Uh, really liked the performance in the Millie Fox. As uh, Shane said, the form's been franked with Lady Laguna coming out and winning since. One from one at the track and distance, four starts, second up for two wins at the second as well. So read really nicely. And as Shane said, you can just see just stalking the lead, getting the perfect uh, run behind them and then being too good late. So Zoo got you on top for me. The value bet for mine is Samana. And it's basically, it's, I'm just regurgitating what Shane said, a mare in good winning form. And that for me is the key coming into some of these races. And she's won her last two, including that group three. She's back up in distance, which I really like. And again, when I was just looking at the speed map and analysing this race, I thought there was a lot of options. There's plenty that want to go forward. There's a few that want to be here and there. And I thought she's probably the most adaptable horse in the race. We've seen her lead and win. We've seen her be able to sit back and run on. We've seen her go well in wet conditions. There's a little bit of rain meant to be around on Saturday only. She's won on dry. So for mine, she was just sort of the most all-rounded package looking in this race if things were to go wrong as well. So I'm happy to be on her, especially in that winning form as well for a value bet in the race. Right, oh, beautiful, love it. On with the Jennies. Uh, so I'm tipping both Jennies uh, on the weekend. So Tony we Bonnaby to have a uh, a big, big day. I wonder where he's going to be. Will, will he be in uh, Melbourne? Will he be in Sydney? Uh, that might be a nice little lead. But I, I, I was on track uh, this day. Jenny Lala won first up at Flemington. Looked enormous in the yard, this horse. Uh, it was an impressive win. Oregon got plenty of upside, no weight, and uh, at 10 bucks. I reckon a great play here. Um, and Kieran Mars so good at uh, getting these horses at feature races. So, uh, Jenny Lala, I've actually chucked in the other Ma horse here uh, in Yonts. I just reckon Barrier 3, going to get a nice suck run at a big price. Johnny Allen's going to go up there for the ride. Um, that's always a good lead. And uh, I reckon just at a nice little each way play, a bit of value there with uh, with Yonce uh, as well. But uh, I've just got a feeling it could be a day of the Jennies uh, on the weekend. Now, listen, best bets. Anywhere else, we'll come back to you, Ads. Uh, you, you've been very, very close um, in the West, mate. What do you got for us, big fella? We've got a value and a best. Uh, the value bet we're coming up in race three, number eight, Katona. Uh, really, really good first up run. Surprised me again. I think because of the trainer only having one horse and it being second run back, I think we'll get a nice price about it. So obviously they're not out yet. They haven't, uh, acceptances haven't been finalised yet. But race three, number eight, Katona, I think we'll get an each way quote. And I'll be keen on that. And then we like the lucky last in Perth at the moment. We'll stay with it. Race nine, number nine, Royal Toronado. This horse is heading for the Derby. It was nominated for that race as well. It was actually nominated for four races this weekend. They've elected to go to a 1600. They've put Clint Johnson Porter on, which I think is a clear sign. And I think this horse is going to be very hard to beat going back in this grade and then heading towards the uh, Derby. So we'll uh, go with both of those. Love it, mate. The derby, I should say. Love it. Shano, what do you got for us, mate? My best for the weekend, Maddie, is at Caulfield. It's in uh, the Mystic Journey race number seven, uh, Peace Treaty. Um, I've got a lot of time for this filly, um, and she's looked very, very good in her two recent jump outs. Uh, trained, of course, by uh, Anthony and Sam Friedman. She's drawn well, Jamie Carr in the saddle. I'm pretty confident she's going to win that race. And out wide, a little bit uh, further, um, Morphinville race number six. Uh, Michael Hickmont's got a, a mare, a galloper running, I should say, uh, Kuardi. Um to be ridden by Jess Eaton, uh, I think a significant jockey change there with Jess taking the saddle. Been pretty good when uh, runner-up in the past two starts, but I think QRD is a really good bet. Race six at Morford will probably going to get around $5, give or take, uh, for it. Love it. I love it, you blokes. Uh, I like the confidence coming out of both you. Uh, I'm going to go to Corford. I'm going to stick with old Uncle Lindsay. Uh, <laughs> race nine, number one, Sir Atlas. This horse won really well at Tarang. Uh, it's a country championship. There's a bit of prize money on the line and uh, been well supported. Opened up at 650 into 460. I always like that. Uh, I don't think the field's overly strong, and I reckon this horse got a heap of uh, ability um, for uh, for Brad Spicer and the team. And then out wide, I'm going to go back to Sydney. Uh, race nine, number two, detonator Jack each way for mine. Uh, I know a few of the owners in this horse, and uh, Jay Collett's the interesting uh, little booking here, and uh, they tell me this horse is going along really, really well. So I think even going to head possibly to a Doncaster. Um, so uh, I reckon this horse at a nice uh, each way price, about nine or 10 bucks might be a, a nice little play on the weekend too. I reckon it'll be storming home uh, somewhere late uh, looking for uh, for the 1,600 metres next start uh, is my bet. But uh, listen, gamble responsibly. That is the key message. Download the Palmer Bet app and get involved. And if you're not following these two blokes above me, uh, you're not uh, you're not serious about horse racing, seriously, because uh, 
uh, some of the best tipsters in the business. They do a great job. And uh, always a pleasure, gentlemen, to see you both. And uh, I know life's going well for you both. But uh, fingers crossed we can get another couple of winners this weekend, boys. Sounds very good. Good luck, boys. Yeah, looking forward to it. Good, uh, good punning this weekend, guys. Good on you guys, and we'll catch up next week. Get involved. Uh, let us know if you've been following the tips or whatever. If we're tipping shocking or you don't agree with our opinions, let us know uh, or drop us a line. It is bolting in, all thanks to Palmer Bear. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.